watching us on online. We're so glad you can join us. We do post on Facebook today, on, on Sundays, and on Monday mornings we post on YouTube. So we'd love to hear from you if you're watching us. You can contact us on our Facebook page or at marchmemorialumc.com. I have a few announcements for our church this morning. Uh, June 6th will be graduation Sunday. So if you have any family members that are graduating, please let us know so that we can honor them and uh, if you can give us their name, we should be able to put together a gift for them and hopefully they can come. So if you have any graduates, please invite them to come on June 6th to our graduation Sunday. Our preschool will be having a little graduation ceremony that day also during the worship. Also, if you will note in your bulletin, we give regularly Parkview Community Mission, and it's a note in your bulletin about it. Uh, we donate to their food program. It's a program that feeds children. Um, what we were doing was taking the food to schools, but now we're taking it to the community and giving it to the kids. And also they still have people, people coming to shop for food. They also have a clothes closet now. They have a, a learning center now. They have a lot going on there. So please don't forget to give to our Parkview Community Mission. Also, all donations would be greatly appreciated for that. Also, in your bulletin, there is a announcement about book club meeting on Thursday, April 15th. Is that going to happen? I see some no, no, no meeting for the book club. Okay. They, they, even though it's in your bulletin, they will not be meeting on April the 15th. Are there any other announcements for our congregation? Yeah, I do have one prayer concern. I, I encourage you to pray for all of those that are on our prayer list and all of those that we hold dear in our hearts. Also, we need to lift up Ryan Kaufman in our prayers. That's uh, Danny and Brenda's great grandson. I think he was born last week, wasn't he, Danny? And he's having a few problems, so please keep Ryan talking in his prayer. Let us pray. Holy Lord, mighty God of heaven, the God that answers prayer, where two or three are gathered together in your name, you said your presence there. We welcome your presence, O Lord. We pray you manifest your power and glory today. We want you to shine your light in us and through us that we may illuminate others for you. As we carry in your presence today to worship, reveal unto us the knowledge of divine mysteries of your word that will transform our lives forever. All for your glory do we pray. And now let us pray together the model prayer that the Lord Jesus Christ taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thou is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
thank the worship team for letting us use music. Let us now stand and repeat together our Apostles' Creed. It's found on page 881 in your hymnal. Together, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, southern of the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the Lord. Amen. You may be seated. Let us now pray together our prayer of illumination. Almighty God, you sent your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, to suffer death on the cross. Grant that we may share in his obedience to your will and in the glorious victory of his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and ever. Amen. Our scripture reading today comes from the Gospel according to St. John and is a continuation of Easter Sunday's reading. It will be in chapter 20, verses 19 through 31. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being shut where the disciples were, for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hand and side. The disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I send you. Now when he said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Now Thomas, one of the twelve, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said unto them, Unless I see his hand, the prints of the nail, and place my finger in the mark of the nail, and place my hand in his side, I will not believe. Eight days later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. The doors were shut, but Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here, and see my hands, and put out your hand, and place it in my side. Do not be faithless, but believe it. Thomas answered him, my Lord and my God. And Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in his name. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I want to start by talking a little about the pandemic we're going through. The American Psychiatric Association has come out with a poll which states that nearly half of all Americans are anxious about the possibility of getting the coronavirus. More than a third of Americans say the coronavirus is having a serious impact 
on their mental health. And most people feel that the coronavirus is having a serious impact on their day-to-day -day life. And most adults are concerned that the pandemic will have a serious impact on their finances. And almost half of us are worried about running out of food, medicine, and supplies. There's a lot of anxiety in the world. A lot of fear. And if you're feeling this way this morning, I want you to know you're not alone. Our gospel lesson for this morning begins with fear. On the very day of the joyous new life of resurrection, the disciples are huddled in a bolted room, afraid of their authority. And their fears are realistic. The collusion between the religious leaders and the Roman Empire has destroyed Jesus. And they have every reason to suspect that they, too, are on the list of suspects. And so they go and shut. But fear and locked doors are no barrier for the resurrected Christ, whose body has already overcome all human obstacles. John tells us that Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And after he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. And the disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Could it be that showing his wounds to the disciples Jesus is not only showing them that he is the same person they saw hanging on the cross a few days ago, but also the wounds prove to them that Jesus has overcome the very worst that the world can do to him or to anyone else for that matter. Evil is no match for Jesus Christ. Death is no match for Jesus. The devil is no match for Jesus Christ. So, what do we have to fear? You know, when my children were little, and they were afraid, I would tell them, I'm the strongest man in the world. And I didn't tell them because I thought it was true, or I didn't tell them that to impress them. I told them in order to calm their fears. For instance, if, if one of them, before they went to bed, said something like, Gary, I'm afraid that robbers are going to break into the house tonight. My response would be, I'm the strongest man in the world. I just kick them out the door. You don't have anything to worry about. So, don't be afraid. And you know it works. They believed me during those very early years when those kinds of fears are especially disruptive to children. Well, in a very real sense, Jesus is the strongest man in the world. All the power and authority, not even death itself, and keep him down. So what have we got to fear? You know, we live in scary times. The anxiety level and the fear level is pretty high right now. And Jesus said to his first disciples, Peace be with you. And Jesus says to us today, Peace be with you. But let's look at what kind of peace Jesus is offering. What does he mean? And who wouldn't want peace? I 
think that's what people desire the most. We all need peace in our lives, don't we? First of all, there's always some danger around the word peace. We must avoid the mistake of assuming that Jesus is talking about the absence of conflict or the presence of quiet and rest or everyone agreeing with each other and getting along. This will happen in the world to come, but not in this world. Think about it. Jesus says, peace be with you. And then in the very next breath, he says, as the Father has sent me, I am sending you. In other words, Jesus' intention is to send the disciples out on the same mission that ended up getting him healed. The peace that Jesus offers has nothing to do with sitting on a couch and eating popcorn. It's not about being able to afford the most expensive house or the finest luxury car. It has nothing to do with cutting ourselves off from the rest of the world. It's not a prosperity gospel. And it doesn't mean that tornadoes can't knock down our homes or financial fallout from the coronavirus won't touch us. In fact, it's the exact opposite. It calls us into a world to love and to minister to others without fear, even though it might threaten our comfort, might threaten our bank account, might threaten all the stuff that we own. Dietrich Bonhoeffer put it bluntly. He said, when Christ calls a person he calls a person to come and die. But it's a dying to our own ways. So it's a call to die to the ways of the world and to find resurrection, real life, and real peace. Christian faith in action brings us peace. Jesus' kind of peace. God's peace. We go back in, in John to chapter 14, verse 27. Jesus says, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled. And do not let them be afraid. Again, the kind of peace that Jesus offers is not about living the high life with the absence of trouble. Of course, if we're honest with ourselves, that kind of peace is just smoke and mirrors anyway. It doesn't exist. Everyone from the richest to the poorest has trouble and so the only real peace is Christ's peace it can come to a person in a jail cell it did fall when he was in jail it can come to a person living on skid row it can come to anyone anywhere it has nothing to do with circumstances it has nothing to do with what's going on outside of us and around us. Rather, it's a gift from Jesus Christ. And for those who accept Jesus' gift, it becomes a peace which transcends all understanding. It's a peace, a contentment that settles deep inside of us. The 
The Apostle Paul said that he learned the secret of how to be content in any circumstance, whether being full or hungry, whether having plenty or being poor. And Paul didn't learn this from taking life easy, from taking the easy way out. He learned this by taking up his cross and following Jesus. He learned it by losing his life only to find it in Jesus. He learned it by giving himself for the sake of others, even when it cost him much. Paul said in Philippians that this peace that peace of God that transcends all understanding keeps our hearts and minds safe in Jesus Christ. And I think that's what we all need. Now more than ever, hearts and minds that are kept there. So I'd like to ask you an honest question this morning. And I want you to think about it. And be honest with yourself and with God. Do you feel as if your heart and mind Or are you like one third of Americans who say the coronavirus has had a serious impact on their mental health? Do you feel like you've gone crazy behind locked doors? Are you depressed? Are you anxious? If you are, you're far from being wrong. The good news is that. Fearfully locked doors and hearts can't keep out God's grace. Doors of fear can't prevent the risen Christ from coming to you and me and offering us the free gift of God's peace. We experience Christ's peace when we reach out to others in need. And even while we're isolated, we can still offer support. Perhaps our older or disabled neighbors need help with groceries or fulfilling prescriptions. We can always leave a package on the doorstep if we want to avoid direct contact with them. Or maybe they just need to hear from a friend, a reassuring voice over the phone. And for those who have financial resources, those that can be used to support our church, local food pantries, other organizations reaching out to people that need, need our help. And we can also be a calming influence to friends and loved ones who are panicking during this time. Helping them to try to gain some perspective on the situation. Being a positive and uplifting person in these anxious times can bring peace to others, which will bring peace to ourselves. There are lots of ways we put our faith into action. And thus, following Jesus' command to receive the Holy Spirit. And then to allow ourselves to be sent by Christ as the Father sent him. And like Thomas in the Gospel, most people still come to believe by seeing, by experiencing the risen Christ in the flesh. So let's live as a part of the body of Christ in this world. The Holy Spirit gives us what we need to do this. If we allow the Holy Spirit to move through us. And above all, remember, the one who comes and offers us peace, even in the midst of, of a tornado, during our financial struggle, during our isolation, our anxiety, and our fear, is the one who has been through the worst on the cross and has overcome everything that the devil and evil and fear, 
isolation and pain and even death in your life. In Christ, we're protected by literally the strongest man in the world. Therefore, what is there to you? Jesus has made a fool of death. Christ has the victory, the biggest threat in the world, even the devil. Those who live in Christ share in his victory. And that knowledge and all brings me peace. I hope it brings you peace. If you haven't done so, won't you give your life over to Christ today? And in doing so, accept God's free gift. Lord Jesus Christ, give us your peace, and in doing so, free us from the burden that weigh us down. Help us to accept the gift that frees us for service to you and to the world around us. In the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. And I hope you enjoy now the final hymn that our worship team
him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you blameless before the presence of his glory with great joy to the only God our Savior through Jesus Christ our Lord be glory, majesty, dominion, and authority before all time, now and forever. Amen.